Hi, and welcome to this short video on the memory clock, which we've adapted from Sandringham High School. The memory clock is a tool that students can use to plan, practice and gain feedback on their subject knowledge. In essence, it's advice on how to spend your time revising. A quarter of your time should be spent reviewing, half your time should be spent practicing, and the remaining quarter should be spent checking. The memory clock has three sections. Review, practice, and check. So why do you need to use this valuable tool? Well, to maximize the chance of learning new material, students need to store past topics in their long-term memory and not use their working memory to consider them. What this means is, you want to make recall easy in the exam. You don't want to be stressing that you can't remember past knowledge. This will use up your working memory and increase your exam stress. Pacing and interleaving involves students spreading out their revision over a long period of time and revising several topics concurrently. This is more effective than cramming. Do not wait till a week or a couple days before to start revising. Revision works best when you go months in advance and spread out your learning. So the first section of the memory clock is review. It's important to review the topic which typically begins with locating notes, past book work, revision guides and knowledge organisers. To review topics most effectively, you should plan a topic you are going to revise, make sure you're clear what content you need to revise. If you're unsure, always start with a mind dump. Spaced studying. You will maximise knowledge retention if you revise all topics over time. Mass topic revision does not work. Elaboration. Reading and highlighting is ineffective. You should transform the information into mind maps, use collective memory, or create flashcards. You could use your knowledge organisers, which you can still get from your senior book of knowledge or venture vitals. You can watch revision videos or revision guides for the review section. Doing this will give you a platform to elaborate from, where you get a deeper understanding of the knowledge. The second section is practice. Testing knowledge and improving answers. Your use of flashcards, low state questioning, will help recall knowledge more efficiently. You should use a range of questions and tasks to practice. Practicing essay writing and improving answers have been found to be successful in knowledge retention. This is where you're going to be using your exam questions and past papers to really practice those exam skills. Set yourself time limits. You are timed in exams. You should set yourself time limits and practice in silence. The third section is check. Feedback is important. It allows you to see your progress and prevents misconceptions. Compare answers to the mark scheme. Read through your mark schemes and check your work to see if you were correct. Use knowledge organizers or notes to improve your answers. Redraft. Once you've marked your work, you should aim to redraft part or all of it. Now you know the knowledge, you should be able to practice more efficiently. And why do we use low stake testing to recall knowledge? It's so we do not forget it. You've seen the forgetting curve. You know, over a seven day period, if you do not recall information effectively, you will forget up to 40% of what you've learned. Put that over a three month period, and you will forget almost all of it. Review often. 